pitfalls. Anyway, this fucking guy, Michael Rappaport of Lancaster Avenue, same name spelling, same blonde hair. I mean, he's not as good looking as me. I mean, uh, you could you could say what you want to say about this kingpin. He's selling that Heron, crack cocaine, and he has more counterfeit $20 bills. Now, I just want to say something. If I had been arrested the first time on these charges, G. Moody, don't you think they would have locked me up and thrown the fucking key away? I would have never gotten out. Yep. I, I feel like if, if I did anything wrong, like they're going to just, they're going to send me to fucking Sing Sing. This cocksucker, two years ago, he was arrested for trying to buy some yogurt. Why don't you just, Michael Rappaport, a masterpiece <laughs> Long Island, why don't you, if you want some fucking yogurt, hit me up. I'll PayPal you to $5.63. I'll buy you the fucking yogurt. Keep my name out of the fucking papers. I got enough fucking problems. Okay, I'm at work. I don't need this shit. Now this guy, he, there's a full investigation. Apparently this guy's some sort of fucking kingpin. He's being held on $200,000 bond, $100,000 cash bail, following an arraignment in the district of Hempstead, another part of Long Island. I mean, mm. what, what do I got to do to get a clean slate here, Moody? Man, I don't know, man. You, you, don't, know you don't have you guys... any sympathy for me. So what if there was a fucking G. Moody, last name rhymes with duty, running around doing dumb shit? Then you'd be all up in arms. But there's a Michael Rappaport, 30 minutes from where I live in Manhattan, nothing from you. Nothing. He don't got your social security number and all that. You all right, man. All right. I'm going to jump into some sick fucks. I, I want to have a sick fuck of the week uh, uh, off with you. There's so many of them. And before we get okay. into this podcast, which is going to be a doozy, I could feel it. There's so many sick fucks, I'm just going to rattle them off. Okay, Miles, just cue the music one time. This award is earned, not given. It's called the Sick Fuck of the Week. This guy's really sick. Lock him up. How could you do it? Don't let him out. Damn. You fuck the dog? You what? You fuck the dog? Why would you fuck the dog? Why would you fuck your girlfriend's dog? What sick fuck? The sick fuck of the week. It's earned. Earned. Not given. You did. What? No. 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 no! Okay, if you never listen to the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast, the Sick Fuck of the Week is an award that's earned, not given. It's earned, not given. I want to give a shout out, by the way, speaking of sick fucks, to the hair and makeup tra uh, trailer on the Netflix show that I'm working on with the fantastic Jennifer Jason Lee. Uh, they have the privilege of uh, making me look like a million dollars. And they're new listeners yeah. to the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. So I want to give a shout out to all four of the ladies in there. I had to... Uh, I had to check to see if they were comfortable in this day and age with me calling them ladies. Because, you know, you could call mm -hmm. grown-ass women ladies, and, and next thing you know, human resources will be on your ass. So I want to give a shout-out to all four yeah. of them. You never know. Yep. All right. Sick fuck of the week. You ready, Moody? I got, I got a few of them. I'm going to throw them in. I want to see if you could top me. It's going like to be like poker here. A Georgia couple who once demanded 550 mil for being, quote-unquote, falsely imprisoned have fucked up. A former Georgia Tech <laughs> linebacker and his wife were sentenced to 20 years in the clink for locking their son in the basement for 18 months. These sick fucks. These, these people Damn. tried to sue the state for $540 million, and they treat their kids like that. The couple will not be allowed to interact with their sons. They already have a 16-year-old and a 10-year-old until they're, they're over 21. It's two of them. Usually it's mm. one or another. We either got a man or a woman. Now we got a couple of sick fucks. Oh, man. Now, I got one for you right here. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll uh, see what you got. A Detroit man driving while watching porn on his phone oh. decided to choke his chicken while driving. Yeah, and? He reaches orgasm, and of, and of course he loses control of the car. You the car fuck. flips over. The sex fiend is ejected and dies with his loaf in his hand. Dumb fuck. Dumb sick fuck. Tragic ending to a sick fuck's life. I'm going to top Clifford you with Clifford Ray. Huh? His name is Clifford Ray. Shit. A 17-year-old girl could face life behind bars. A 
18 year old girl. She tried to rape a young man at knife point. I don't understand what's going on. I, ne- I never heard no shit like this. She tried to rape? She tried to rape Duke uh, at knife point. I- I'm sure if she had just, you know, <laughs> came at him with a little bit of sugar and like just said, yo, I'm trying to freak off, none of this would have went down. Yeah, you don't need no knife to, to rape a guy. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> you, you're a young girl. Attractive looking girl, 17. All you got to do is say, oh, uh, pull your pants down. Yeah, and, you, and if this guy doesn't want it, trust me, there's somebody else in line that's ready to, uh, you know, freak off. It never stops. Oh, oh man. He would, that guy probably was like, put the knife down. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm looking for a good time too. No need for the violence. Nah, what are you doing here? Yeah. Let me hit it from behind. Yeah, we don't, I don't need the knife. You're making me nervous. I can't perform here. This isn't the sick fuck, but this has to do with the All Loaves Matter campaign. All Loaves Matter. All Loaves Matter. There's a gentleman who's trying to start a small dick acceptance movement. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If you got a, a micro dick or, 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 or you got a straight pipe, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You, you, what's the song by, was it Clarence Williams or Clarence Carter G? Clarence Williams? Stroking? I be, I be stroking. Yo, it ain't, it ain't about, uh, uh, listen, you, obviously you want something good to work with, but if your stroke game is insane, you should be okay. This guy wrote no. a poem called My Small Penis. My man, nobody wants to hear about this. He wrote this poem that goes, I have a tiny cock. Look like a crooked little finger. Everybody else's dick is inevitably a little bit bigger. If six inch as an average can truly be believed, someone here in this room is twice the size of me. Duke, I'm not reading your poem. No, yeah. Nobody's down yeah. with your movement. You, you, you need to get your fuck style up. Yeah, but he can't do nothing. He's, he's, his whole crew is, is, is micro penis. So he's trying to show like, yo, I know we all got the micro, so let's just stick together and poke fun of us at ourselves. But you're not going to get no ass can't. like that. No women are coming. Cause, cause I just want to give a message to this dude. The way you carry yourself, this dude's name is Ant Smith. And if you, if you get your, your whole sex game down correctly, you won't be writing bullshit poems. He can't do shit poems. with that. Huh? He can't do shit with that. Cut your shit off, Duke, and become a <laughs> what, what eunuch. What do you want him to do with it? He can't. Cut his shit off and become a whoa, eunuch. Whoa, you whoa, whoa, you, whoa. You're talking about, listen, all loaves matter. Don't tell him to do that. No. You don't know what kind no. of vulnerability this guy uh, has going on no. right now. No, he's, he said he's three inches. What, yo, you can't satisfy no woman with that. Just Yo, you got to become a eunuch. <laughs> well, what do you want him to do? Cut his shit off. All right. I, 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 okay, listen. Speaking of all loaves matter, a jilted girlfriend blindfolds her level, slices off his penis with a oh. sickle, which is which is like a kind of knife that thing, Russian like the kind shit. of shit you do like, um, you know, like that arts Russian and crafts shit. with. She ran down the street with his loaf after cutting it off. Like a, like a relay race. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was sleeping gave, with other she, women, sweetheart. Let, let, let me tell you something. There's... There's plenty of fishes in the sea. I, I know it hurts, but this is you're taking things too far, miss. This is this is not this is not okay. This this is yeah, not cool. He, this what? is not fair. He he didn't deserve that. I know it hurts. I get it. I support you. We support you here at the Iron Rappaport Stereo Podcast. But you can't do a hatchet job on Duke. Now, you're never gonna be with another man. My man doesn't have a loaf. Everybody's losing here. Yeah, and it can't be reattached. I know what you're talking about. This happened in India, and it, it was because he wifed who they picked out for him to marry. Because, you you know, in India, they pick out, you five years old, you're going to marry this motherfucker, and that's it. <laughs> um, This is another thing I wanted to ask you about, because I, you're a landlord, as people know. Right. I, I wanted to see if you were ever on, on this shit. 
pretty girl. This is a pretty girl. You can look it up. She's imp- she's pretty. I I, I think her, her name is Anna Anesthesia. Anthe, An- some kind of fucked up name. I don't know. Moncrief. Pretty, pretty looking like, you know, volleyball playing looking white chick. Fatally shot her tenant because he didn't pay his rent. Philly chick. Wow. Now, you've had tenant disputes, Mr. Moody. We've documented them here on the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. Have you ever thought about pulling out that steel and putting two in somebody's ass for not paying the rent? No, 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 I, because I know how volatile uh, a situation can, can get. I know how uh, the tenants don't really understand how finance works, how keeping things on and, you know, heat and whatever. So I don't deal with them like that or at that level, man. I don't let it, you know, I know how it is. Um, all right, Moody. Let's jump into this podcast. We're going to get into it all. We're going to have Eli Lake. I don't know if he's the official or unofficial political correspondent of the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. But this is Michael Rapport. We're going to play some funk. We're going to get into it right now. All right, I'm going to be honest. I'm not a cook, but Blue Apron has changed all of that for me. Blue Apron is a simple and affordable way to eat right and eat healthy at home. And when I say affordable, I mean affordable. For less than $10 per person per meal, Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals. You get to choose from a variety of new recipes each week or let Blue Apron's culinary team surprise you. Recipes are not repeated within a year, so you'll never get bored. It's so easy. Each meal comes with step-by-step, easy to follow. And when I say easy to follow, if I could do it, Anybody could do it. Easy to follow recipe card and pre-portioned ingredients and can be prepared in 40 minutes or less. Blue Apron's freshness guarantee promises that every ingredient in your delivery arrives ready to cook or they will make it right. A couple of days ago, I had a piece of chicken with some vegetables. I swear to God, it was like a five-star meal in France, okay? They got upcoming meals. They got a cashew chicken stir-fry with tango mandarins and jasmine sauce, roasted pork. I was actually able to pull together a fantastic Blue Apron meal for my wife the other day. My kids love it. Blue Apron's mission is to make incredible home cooking accessible to everyone. Again, if I could do it, anybody could do it. Blue Apron achieves this by supporting more sustainable food system, setting the highest standard for ingredients and building a community of home chefs. You'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. Go to blueapron.com slash rapaport. That's blueapron.com slash rapaport. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. A new podcast network featuring radio and TV personalities talking business, sports, tech, entertainment, and more. Play it at play.it. This is the Iron Rap Report Stereo Podcast coming live and direct from the Gloom Tomb Studio, the exclusive studio of the Iron Rap Report Stereo Podcast. My name is Michael Rappaport, a.k.a. the Gringo Mandingo, a.k.a. White Mike, a.k.a. Mr. White Folks. Um, <clears throat> that's my patent sniff. I've been doing that since 1982, 83. Um, uh, I think you stole that from my man D. Trump. Uh, I, think, I don't think you should spread rumors like that. I would like you to attract that and, and, and keep it real right now, please. Th- th- those kinds of rumors, and these are sensitive times. Please no, re- retract that. Old. Excuse me? He's 70 years old. You must have copied. Um, okay, so just as far as you know, how long have I been sniffing? Uh, not as long as uh, D. Trump. Okay, but how long have you heard him sniffing since you've heard me sniffing? You want to be fucking <laughs> difficult in here? Please answer the question, sir. Uh, I think you may have. Uh, you got it. Uh, thank you. Um, I appreciate that. Um, the person you heard breaking my balls so early in this podcast, which I expect to be a classic. A dandy. Uh, uh, that's Mr. Moody. Uh, last name uh, it rhymes with duty. Uh, mm-hmm. G. Moody, Gerald Moody, G. Monetti. Uh, yes. The 2015-2016 podcast co-host a year. Uh, yes, that's true. Uh, can't yep. deny it. This is the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. I think we're going to go a little bit longer than I usually like to go. 
That's what she said. Um, <laughs> but there's so much things going on across the board in sports, entertainment, politics, and in the just the, the zeitgeist of things that get us going here at the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. We're going to have uh, the uh, unofficial, official, political correspondent, Eli Lake, join us. For, me and Moody are going to call him, ask yep. him some questions about uh, what is going on in the world with the uh, immigration ban. Uh, you know, I, I, I just want to say uh, I've broken a lot of my rules. Rule number one of the Iron Rapport Stereo podcast is no fact checking. But in order to be a, a no fact checking pioneer in this day and age, you must do some fact checking first. It's like riding a bike. You can't just start riding a bike with no hands. Okay, so I encourage some fact checking during this time. I'm breaking rule number one of the Iron Rapport Stereo podcast, which is no fact checking at all. When we do record the I Am Rappaport Stereo fa uh, podcast, we do not fact check, but you yeah. have to be a lunatic to go completely raw dog without a bag in this day and age. Do you agree, Mr. Moody? I agree. I think uh, we have a lot of liars out there, and uh, uh, we have to um, search for the truth sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And, and I don't think you're ever going to have the complete truth because there's so much information there's so many sources of information, but I think <clears throat> if you do enough searching and enough fact-checking, again, I am acknowledging breaking rule number one of the Iron Rapport Stereo podcast, you'll come up uh, with, with, with a gut instinct which will tell you what's right and what's wrong. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate everybody who was involved with the BET New Edition film. Yes, that was really good, man. Over 19 million, I think it's 20 million people watched the three-day miniseries that, that I had the pleasure of being involved in. Shout out to BET, Robbie Reed, my man Chris Robinson, his son, uh, the writer Abdul, producer Jesse. There's so many people uh, to name. I'm not going to do the whole, the whole list of people. But I'm proud of the film. I'm so happy it was a huge success. Um, New Edition, as we talked about, was, was such a cultural phenomenon when they came on the scene, um, and it was really a no-brainer for me to be a part of it. But I, nobody, I think, could, could could tell that it was going to turn out to be like the fucking hit that it turned out to be. It was a yeah, humongous was, hit, uh, yes, critically, yes. and the people loved it. Twitter loved it, and it sort of like brought people together over. It was weird being a part of it. Like yeah. people were like, I never was a part of something that like you know Twitter was so emotionally invested in. The, and 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 like during the commercial breaks, people were just. I like this. I, I hate this. He's a good character. He's a bad character. These kids are right. killing it. Mike Rapp, you're a scumbag. Um, I yeah, played the manager well done. in the yeah. cheap suit who took them for everything they had. And <laughs> did it with pride and joy. Every group that has to go through success, especially in that time, I think people have figured it out, the playbook, I hope they have, uh, had some hook-nosed Jewish manager that was going to mm. drain them and gouge them and drag them through the coals <laughs> for everything they had. So I, I, nice. I'm really proud of the film, and, and I'm glad people loved it. And um, if you haven't seen it, it's on VET, and you, you know you could. I don't know. There's plenty of different ways to watch it. I don't need to explain these things to uh, you guys. You're you're you're, you're way more um, digitally savvy than I am, but I'm pretty digitally savvy. Um, yeah. Second of all, Mr. Moody. Yeah. As I get this podcast going, I and I am and I am in full cashmere. Um, I have a cashmere hoodie. Black with black cashmere sweatpants. It's that time of year. Cashmere mm -hmm. season. Um, I feel good. I feel relaxed. I'm, I'm not as, uh, like G. Moody is a straight, uh, shit-stained drawers, dirty socks no. type of guy. No, I'm not. I'm sorry. Retract What's that? that statement. <laughs> I'm no, sorry. I'm not. Okay, well, then you fucking say who you heard the sniff from first right now, my friend, because I, I resent I, I, it from the beginning of the podcast. Who who did you actually hear sniff first? Uh, I think it was you. But I have to say, if he's 70 years old, he just didn't start sniffing. I, I, I get that. 
But he didn't start. He wasn't sniffing in the 90s when he was just a, a, a mogul business tycoon fuck. I didn't hear him sniffing <laughs> then, did you? Only time I heard no. him sniffing was he got into politics. Like the Andrew Dice Clay said, this fucking guy it. stole my act. And, and next thing <laughs> you know, he's, he's, he's the president of the United States. How do I know he doesn't listen to this podcast? Who knows? Right. I'm just saying. Okay. Okay. No. G Moody doesn't have shit stained drawers. Yeah, yeah. That I mean, came out of a, a place of resentment. And, and of course... He doesn't have holes in his socks. Yeah, come on, B. But you don't have a pair of cashmere sweatpants because you're not that type of dude. I feel like it's a um, an indulgence. I pampered myself with these these cashmere sweatpants and this cashmere hoodie. Uh, I, like I have it. mixed feelings about it, but I do enjoy lounging around in my cashmere sweatpants, my cashmere hoodie especially when you're about to break shit down like we're about to break shit down on this here I Am Rapport Stereo podcast. Um, I'll let you take the floor on this first thing. Serena Williams, the beautiful, beautiful Serena Williams, defeated her just as beautiful sister, Venus Williams, yeah. to win her 23rd title in the, the, the Australian Open. Just think about this, and then I want to hear your take on this. Serena Williams from Compton beat yes. her older sister, Venus Williams, also from Compton, not the, the epicenter of tennis players in the world. No, they, handball players. They played in the Australian Open finals. Serena Williams, Compton. Venus Williams, Compton. Their sisters, CPT. Serena Williams, won her 23rd Grand Slam. That is some of the most way out, unbelievable sports shit that I think you're ever going to hear. I don't think there's ever going to be a story that is as far out and is unbelievable. Talk about a fairy tale as the Williams yeah. sisters. Yep. We've, talked, we've talked many, many times about the Williams sisters. Monetti, you term yes. the phrase smash mouth tennis. Yeah. What did it mean to you as a Serena Williams and Venus Williams, as a Williams sister fan, to see her win her 23rd Grand Slam title. Um, surpassing, I think, Steffi Graf. For me, it, it's a culmination of these two girls, and Serena in particular. Serena Williams is the best tennis player, women's tennis player of all time. And here's why. And, and I just want to chime in. Venus is top five. Yes. If, to come if not from, for the injuries, we'd be arguing which one of them is one and two. Right. So to come from that um, environment, you know what I'm saying? And to, uh, to get to that level and, and not their father teaching them tennis and, them not, and him not knowing tennis, that's a lot of hurdles to get over. And then actual, to have the actual talent to dominate the competition like no one has ever done. This is the best, and no one is going to surpass that unless you come from those same backgrounds and do exactly what she did and break her records. I, come from I, I, don't, I don't see it happening because, because the big thing that Serena has is the good fortune, and this is just the way the chips, the chips are lined up. There's been no yeah. major injury that's kept her out for a long, long period of time, and and and... When she's had her injuries, she's come back and, and there's been no uh, hiccup. You know, some athletes, they get like Venus. Venus never came back from the injuries and was quite the same. You know, she had right. serious, serious stuff going on. Serena's had injuries, but she's come back. I mean, the year that she was robbed for athlete of the year, female athlete of the year, I think it was, by Ronda Rousey. Previously, she had so many injuries. Congratulations to the Williams sister. I, I I would put either one of them or Richard open invite to the Iron Rapport Stereo podcast. We love you. We support you wholeheartedly. I hope she kicks ass this year and goes for the round robin. Yep. I'm jealous that she's engaged. I'm a happily married man. Uh, but Serena, maybe in another lifetime. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. These things could happen. They may, they may not happen. But uh, anybody that says 
anything derogatory about the way she looks, you're a shitbag, you're a hater, and and I, I can pretty much guarantee that your your, your fuck style is not um, uh, buck wild. Um, that being said, I don't know. We could talk about this. We do. Let's just listen. We're we're not gonna we're not gonna regurgitate all the Trump shit and the the Muslim ban. Uh, I I will tell you some 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 facts. Trump issued an executive order last Wednesday calling the immediate construction of a physical wall on the southern border. Trump says that Mexico will pay for the wall. The president of Mexico, Enrique Peña Nieto, I know I'm not saying it correctly, no disrespect to my uh, Latino listeners, I do the best with the accent. I do the best speaking uh, uh, English the way I speak it. Please don't judge the way I said the president of Mexico's name. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) They were supposed to have a meeting Tuesday because Trump said they will pay for it. El Presidente said, fuck you. And then uh, Trump tweeted that if Mexico won't pay for the wall, they should cancel the meeting. El Presidente of Mexico said, we canceled the meeting, asshole. (laughs) Uh, I'm glad. (laughs) He's got this guy, Steve Bannon, 2017's most famous white person with absolutely no lips. Keels, please. Send this guy, Sloppy Steve Bannon. We're starting a Twitter site called Sloppy Steve. Dude, this guy makes me look like a fucking fashion icon. Dresses like a homeless person that escaped a methadone clinic. Sloppy Steve Bannon. Mm-hmm. He's Trump's chief strategist. He's lashing out at the media, calling the press, saying they should shut the fuck up. They should be embarrassed and humiliated. No, you shut up, Steve Bannon. You sloppy, no lip having animal. You. He's given this guy all court, all sorts of uh, uh, promotions, jobs <laughs> that military people. I don't know what, what 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 kind of relationship they have. Right. Uh, hashtag golden shower. And of course, the U.S. refugee ban. Th- this is just a short version of it for ninety days. The order included a hundred and twenty day suspension of U.S. refugee admissions. We have questioned the reason for the protests and, and, and all this stuff. I want to say I'm happy and proud. I support the protesters. The protesters are getting shit done. The protesters are affecting Trump. They're protesting LA. They're protesting all over the world again, once again. And put your protesting seatbelts on, people. But what is the protest about? Yo, Come on, G, you're not asking. The protest, this particular protest is about this guy is trying to keep refugees, trying to keep people out of this country. You know what it's about. They said it's not, it's, it's not a Muslim ban. This is hysteria. Well, what, what is it, G Monetti? He told you what it was. Yeah, what he is said, it, Mr. Fucking? Well, go, go, <laughs> go ahead. What is it? To... Tighten up the vetting of the system, and it's a campaign promise that he's fulfilling. And but, it's temporary. It's temporary. It's not permanent. And refugees can come, and they will come. He can't keep out refugees. This is why uh, they won the stay. You know what I'm saying? So, yo, it's just, this is hysteria, B. The acting attorney general said, fuck you. Said, fuck his ban on refugees. They're not letting this shit go. It wasn't planned out. It was pre-cooked. And it caused mass chaos. It caused mass chaos. And I know all of this, and we can sit here and argue this, and Eli Lake will break it down. It says about immigration. And so everybody's Mr. Muslim now. Everybody's like, oh, don't send these, don't block these people. Yo, these, these countries, some of these countries are on the list of being countries that are hostile to the United States. And he just took it a step further <laughs> and, and said, yo, right now, for 90 days, these countries can't come in. This person, well, can I, I won't even try to pronounce the name. It would be a disservice for me to try to pronounce the name. Basically said, fuck you to Trump. Everybody is saying, fuck you to Trump. Nobody is supporting him except for G. Monetti. I'm not supporting him. The media is one-sided. 
It, they, they, they're just demonizing. But, but, uh, but if you say the media is one sided, sided, for what reason? Do you think the reporters I, and, and, and these people, they're all dumb and that all these people are on some sort of payroll? There's no payroll. I'm not saying I'm saying it's supposed to be balanced journalism. These guys are, are, Turn on are giving us. You these get guys bailed. are giving Turn, us. I, I, I suggest you listen to all of his shit. CNBC, Fox, CNN, flip the channels around. I do. Fox is to the right and everything else is to the left. <laughs> That's what it is. Everything else is left, left, left. So this is why Trump is going at the media. This is why he does this. He's, he's, he's like, trying, but he's but he's trying to persuade. He's not doing it just because he he only goes at the media. He doesn't like. He said the New York Times is shit. The New York Daily News is shit. Every paper is shit. But he doesn't say read w- which one is great, which one is perfect. <laughs> he he thinks it's a little um, bent towards you know just attacking attacking him because this same press. Didn't even think he was going to win. So, of course, he's going to get up there and say, fuck these guys. They didn't know anything. They don't know this country. This is what he's saying. I, I, I can't even believe what I'm hearing, man. You, you, you support Yo, this shit. You think I'm, this I'm is giving, like, like... No, you, you, this you're is not playing, support. Like, you, you're playing like the, like the, um, balanced. the antagonist a, of it. What, what's balanced it. about it? Then, then you tell me what's good about what he's doing. I never said anything was good. I'm just explaining it. In an objective view. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to see what actually happened. What what you know what I'm saying? Rather than all the hysteria, calm the fuck down. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. What the fuck he's gonna do? He's doing it. It's a new administration. Yo, they he, always do it. Always come in and cut shit. He's actually doing it. And people are like, he said he was gonna do it. And now it's like, oh shit, he's really doing it. And well, none of it's good. None of it is what? good. Not one of it, not one part of it is good. The, the, the North Dakota pipeline, no good. Right. This is no good. So, yeah, he, so far he's keeping his word. He not built, there's no fucking wall coming. I guarantee you here, Mark, my, Mark, my, you're Mr. Prediction. Okay. <laughs> there ain't no wall coming. He already yeah, you, knows the politics, pros, cons, and everything in between of that wall. He knew it beforehand. He knew Mexico wasn't doing it. This was a, a selling point. Mark my words, there is no wall g- coming. There will be no wall during his four-year tenure. If he makes it that far, there is no wall coming, and he already knew that. He sold a bunch of bullshit with that wall shit, and now he's trying to say he pro- This guy is no fu- listen. You could say what you want about Trump, his ego. He so this. He so that guy's not dumb. He's trying to keep the people that voted for him happy, and they're going to shut down all the bullshit that he does because what he's doing. Yo, de- fuck the taxes and, and these rich people that are like, yo, well, the taxes, the taxes. Fuck the, me, me I, I have a couple of bucks. I don't give a fuck about the taxes. Morally, what he's doing is not right. Constitutionally, what he's doing is not right. If it saves me a buck, yo, I'm not with it. I don't want it. I don't, I, I don't want the, the buck to be saved. I can't sleep at night. People are freaked out and they have reason. This isn't fear monger shit. It's really happening. This isn't like, well, what if? It's going down for real, like the fucking song says. He's well, doing it for real. And, 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 and all the shit, the, 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 the sentiment that he kicked. My, my Facebook page is filled, filled with, with filth. Every fucking day, I get all kind of filth. You end loving this. You yeah. fucking, you, you, you should be ashamed of you fucking Jew this. Yeah. Yeah, you you love you 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 support it you, like and this is just my like this is what's out the the, the scum scumbums the bottom feeders the shit bags they're coming out from and they they think it's their time to shine. Yeah, that he stirred the pot, and of course that was a uh, reprehensible. So you know, and, and uh, I don't that, want to get into it like a political argument because we could do that for yeah. days. Eli will help break down some facts. <laughs> when he comes on, but hours after Trump signed the, the the ban, a Texas mosque goes up in flames. Yeah, this is gonna continue. This is he, gonna continue. He's going to get impeached, and violence will ensue. Yeah, uh, he's yo, going gonna... to get impeached, and violence will ensue at some fucking point. 
Even this guy, Mike Pence, with his homophobic and his lack of, 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 of any sort of uh, understanding of compassion for women's rights and so on and so on, even him, I know he's like morally, this is like, this isn't right. We, we, we are going to wish the Bushes were in office when this shit is done. We're going to be begging for them to come back. Forget Obama. Forget Bill Clinton. We're going to wish Bush was back when this shit is done. It's just unacceptable, man. It's just unacceptable, man. Like he got, it's not like fear. Like people are running around in fear. It's really going down. It went down at JFK. You, 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 I'm in LA. You're in New York. You're right there. Uh, yeah, and everybody's telling, uh, now everybody's let let people in, and, and this is un-American. And, of and course you should vet people. Of course there should be background checks. Of course all that. Of so, course so all now, that. Of course, so now there's a <laughs> He's new He's not talking admin- about that, though. Now there's a new administration who uh, the uh, president has promised that he would kind of overhaul the vetting system. And and this is what he promised to his base that put him in office. So, of course, in the first couple of days, you're going to pander to them. And this is what's happening. So that's it. Yo, that's he wasn't it. talking about improving the vetting prior. The, 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 he the, said the, this, he was this talking is why about shutting shit down. He wasn't this, talking about improving the vetting. He's talking about days? shutting shit down. The, the, my man who plays for the Milwaukee Bucks, Thorn Maker, rookie, refugee, here, he, here working, essentially. Oh, he's in. They were he's in Toronto in. when the shit went down. I guarantee you if he wasn't a basketball player, they wouldn't have let him back in the country during the whole they, they let. I know that was some NBA shit. They were like, they let him through. Once, once they got everything together, the guys with green cards and all that stuff could come in. <laughs> it was a shocker to the world. I understand that, but that's why he did it. He's like, yo, it's a new sheriff in town. Reggie Hammond. Reggie Hammond is the fucking uh, president. Listen, you know what? Matter of fact, I'm going to call Eli Lake cause, cause to, to break this shit down. And I want you... To ask him some questions, and I'm going to ask him some questions, too. This is the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. We'll be right back with the unofficial, official political correspondent of the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast from Bloomberg News, Mr. Eli Lake. The I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast is sponsored by Casper Mattress, an obsessively engineered mattress at a shockingly fair price. You could try a Casper mattress for 100 nights risk-free in your home. If you do not love it, they will pick it up and refund you everything. With over 20,000 reviews online and an average of 4.8 stars, Casper is quickly becoming the Internet's most popular mattress. They have sheets. They have pillows. They even have doggy beds. Go to Casper.com. Save $50 towards any mattress purchased by visiting www dot casper.com forward slash rapaport use the promo code rapaport try a casper mattress 100 nights risk-free in your home if you don't love it they will pick it up and refund you everything go to www.casper.com forward slash rapaport welcome to play it a new podcast network featuring radio and tv personalities talking business sports tech entertainment and more Play it at play.it. All right, this is the yeah. Iron Rap Port Stereo Podcast. Right now, we have the, is it, Eli, is it, I forget what it is. Are you the unofficial, official political correspondent or the official, unofficial political correspondent of the Iron Rap Port it's Stereo official, Podcast? Unofficial, unofficial. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, we have Eli Lake who works at Bloomberg News. Eli, just for the people that, that have never heard you on, on the episodes before, because we have new listeners all the time, just real quickly, what do you do for a living at Bloomberg? I'm a columnist for Bloomberg uh, in what's called Bloomberg View, and I get syndicated in a lot of newspapers, uh, and I write about politics and national security. All right. Now, me and Moody have just been arguing uh, uh, fact check list Lee about the political ban, uh, I'm sorry, about the, 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 the refugee ban uh, that Trump laid down. In a nutshell, 
Now, now, G, do you want to start with the first question? Because you said it was for 90 days. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to let you talk right quick, G. I want to let Eli to break it down. Eli, in layman's terms, what happened in the last 72 hours with President Trump? I can't believe that I'm saying that, but I give the respect where the respect is earned, I think. All right. It was a lot of things at once, and it was confusing, and I understand why a lot of people – because and the Trump White House did a terrible job of getting the – documents to reporters and explaining it in a coherent way. But we now know what happened. The most dramatic thing was that Trump stopped all travel from uh, Iraqis, Nigerians, Sudanese, seven Muslim majority countries. He suspended any migration into America from people who had valid visas to travel here. And that has caused enormous disruptions. And in the first 48 hours over the weekend, it appeared to apply to people who are permanent residents in the United States, which means they have a green card. They live here, but they're not U.S. citizens. But to get a green card requires an enormous amount of vetting. No one ever said that those people are sleeper cell terrorists any more than American citizens who go online and become ISIS or something like that. So that's that. Wait, let me let me back up. When you said it appeared to affect them, what do you mean by that? Well, when this was because this was done in an unprecedented and haphazard way without proper legal vetting or input from the Department of Homeland Security, the State Department, the Justice Department or the rest of the U.S. government, what ended up happening was that individual border control agents at airports interpreted it to mean that if you had a green card, we, they had to sort of suspend your status in some way. And that if you traveled with a green card, which means you're a permanent resident, you're basically, you pay taxes, you're almost an American citizen. I don't think you get to vote, but, you know, that those people live here. So it meant that people who were traveling back into the United States who had green card for a period of time over the weekend were told that they couldn't come back into the country. And it's, that's not the same as somebody who's on a business trip. That's somebody who can't feed their cat uh, because they live in, you know, Detroit or something. You know, it was, it was, a, it was a real mess. This is like regular exactly Joe Schmo with a green card who lives in New Jersey, who's been living here, who's got a family, who's been living here for years, as well as, as, well as people that just got here. Well, right. It's very hard to get a green card. If you're a green card, you live here. So... So let me just say, it looks now on Monday that they've walked that back. The Department of Homeland Security said it does not apply to the green card, and but it's still somewhat confusing. But that was the really dramatic thing. But even if you just have a visa to come to the United States, that already went through a process. And, you know, there are lots of people who visit the country all the time. Now, all that said, under Obama, there was more scrutiny to people traveling from places like Syria or Iraq. Um, I think Sudan, I forget all the other countries, but there was this kind of more scrutiny, but they didn't shut down any travel. That's the difference. And that's what Trump did that was so dramatic. Okay. And how is this going to be rectified? What has been the blowback? Where do we go from here? And and I don't know if you heard this because it, 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 I think it might've just literally happened. Trump fires. Yep. So break that down. He He fired the attorney general, Sally Yates, for refusing to enforce a legal order. So th- th- I just asked right. you a bunch of shit. You could just riff and, and break all that down as you please. There's another thing that it did that, so the dramatic thing that everybody saw in the airports was what I just described about shutting down the travel for those seven countries. In addition to that, he said that there would be no more refugees indefinitely from Syria. And that means that people who had already been approved to resettle in the United States, their status is unclear. It looks like that's, there's going to be a legal challenge, which will get into what you just talked about with Trump firing the acting attorney general. Um, and then finally, there was a redefinition of when we do let in refugees, the considerations that we should look at, which was that if you're suffering religious persecution and you're a religious minority, then you should get a priority treatment. Um, which, by the way, is part of it that I don't object to in principle. Now, what happened after, as soon as this comes out, and as soon as we saw people not being allowed to come into the country, a number of lawyers, mainly from the American Civil Liberties Union, began challenging this executive order, saying it was unconstitutional. 
And a judge in Brooklyn said that, at least I think when it applies to green card holders, that there was a stay before, so the courts could look at this. So there was a part of the executive order that was sort of, they halted for the time being. And this brings us to the Justice Department, because that means there are a number of challenges to this executive order in court, and the Justice Department is the government's lawyer. And so the acting head of the Justice Department, because Jeff Sessions, who's Trump's pick to be the attorney general, has not yet been approved by the Senate, uh, had said that she would not defend in court the constitutionality of this executive order. And then Trump fired her. She was the acting attorney general. She had no power anyway. She was Obama's deputy attorney general. That's correct. She was a lame duck in there. She was going to leave anyway. So who, so who's going to replace her and when? Well, I don't know exactly how they're going to do it, but any day now, Jeff Sessions, who is Trump's pick to be the attorney general, is expected to be approved. And then there will be Trump's attorney general, who I'm sure will enforce this executive order. So it's not quite like the constitutional crisis during Watergate when Nixon fired, his, I think, two attorney generals in the space of 24 hours. Um, it, this is more, you know, kind of another remnant, but it is an, a significant protest that, you know, the, 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 the acting head of the, the Justice Department, a Democrat appointed by Obama, but still saying, you know, they feel so strongly that they can't in good conscience defend it in court, which may have some bearing on how judges view this down the road, though a lot of legal experts, I should say, argue that Trump has an enormous amount of authority to do this kind of thing when it comes to letting people into the country. I mean, it's been supported by courts for many times. The executive is very strong in this regard. Now, in the most totally unbiased way possible, what are the chances of a refugee killing doing some destruction in this, in this country? Like of all the, like the, the, the terrible acts, the Dylan roofs, the, the Sandy Hooks, and, and, and I don't mean to demean any of it, of all the, the, the Orlando shooting, the Boston, all the horrible mass murders that have happened, and you may or may not know the, the details on it, how many of these mass murders that have happened in this country, in the United States, and obviously I know they've happened in other countries, and it has been connected to, to, to ISIS, and, and everybody's on the same page. Nobody wants anything to do with any of those fucking ISIS people. Out of all the, 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 the events that have happened here, aside from 9-11, do you know, can you tell me, can you shed light, can you ar articulate how many of them have put, been put on these people that are going to potentially be banned, that have actually happened on, on, on refugees coming into the country? So that's a great, this is the key issue here, which is if you are a refugee, it means you're fleeing persecution, you're, you're fleeing a, a situation where we take you in because of our values as a country that's, you know, of immigrants and when we welcome people who are fleeing persecution. Now, in order to get to that, it takes two, three years. Uh, the least, if you were a terrorist, um, you, there are much, there are much easier ways to try to get into the country, um, than through our refugee program. Right. Now, what I think happened with Donald Trump, because he, I think, is like, almost, he's like, it's hard for him to focus, is that he is confusing the situation in Europe where there were hundreds of thousands of people who showed up in Greece and were trying to, were, were you know, running for their lives, and those people could not be vetted. So Germany took in something like 100,000 people in 2016, which is a lot for a country that size, and there's no way they could have vetted that numbers of people, but we're talking about, or I think it's actually more, I'm sorry, it's like, I don't want to it's like almost a million or it's, a, it's an enormous number of people that Germany took in and the Europeans are facing a tide of people who are coming from Turkey and sailing through the Mediterranean. And it's a very different problem with the numbers. The number of people who actually come to the United States has been in the thousands. And Obama tried to say he wanted to take a hundred thousand in, but we we're not, I mean, there was a surge in some way of taking them in, but we're the last stop on this journey. So we are the place of settlement in America. And, that process is, is much different than just, you know, trying to apply, uh, you know, it's very hard to get that is what I'm trying to say. So it's, it's, it's the chances of a refugee being a terrorist already are slim to none. But that said, if that family does not assimilate and they end up, you know, having a lot of problems in America, it is possible we've seen a second generation kind of being alienated 
they could be drawn to that. But you could argue that that's the case for American citizens because, right. you know, ISIS has recruited non-Muslims, too, who are, you know, sort of vulnerable online and want something to sort of make their lives dramatic fall for this terrible hate-filled ideology. But in terms of letting in actual terrorists, it's not a threat. But but these big mass killings that have taken place over the last, you know, decade, the, the, the Boston, uh, uh, you know, right. and, and Orlando and, 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 you know, the, you know, the, you know, the Dylan Roofs, the, you know, and, and the, how do you, do you know how many of them have been by actual quote unquote ISIS people, like legitimate ISIS people that are not from this country? Well, in the case of the Sarnaev brothers, we just think they were radicalized online. And that was really, they did this, I think, before ISIS really was, was, was when it was ISIS was just getting started as an international organization. So in the case of San Bernardino, that couple, and we need to, there's a lot we need to still know about that case. But that couple, they, they were, they were first generation immigrants into this country. And she, I think, was from Pakistan. I think he was from Pakistan. She was from Saudi Arabia. Those are two countries, by the way, that are not on this list mm -hmm. uh, of countries that we did. And then Afghanistan, Omar Mateen, who did Orlando, was the son of an Afghan uh, immigrant who was in, at one point, the Afghan government. And um, he himself, you know, wasn't really a member of ISIS. He was, I think, you know, he was he was he couldn't deal with the fact that he was gay. And I think right. that led him into a radical direction. And then he did it in the name of ISIS, and ISIS took credit for it. But again, it wasn't like he was coming from the training camp and gotcha. giving instructions to put a cell together. I got you. Well, can, 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 I, can I ask one? Please do. Yeah, absolutely. Please do. I, wait, wait. Uh, Eli, my man G. Moody, the 2015-2016 podcast co-host here, I feel like he's fucking lost his shit this, this episode. Please ask a question. Um, my, my question is, what would be what is so wrong with a new administration uh, kind of overhauling the uh, doing their uh, vetting process and, and temporarily banning uh, certain countries that were on the list for um, from President Bush as the axis of evil. So these certain countries that Obama also outlined as being uh, a bastion for harboring terrorists, Donald Trump just took it a step further and said, okay, we're going to ban everybody. It wasn't directed, I think, at refugees because if you're fleeing persecution, you're supposed to get in. This is what America is about. So I'm saying those countries, what's wrong with kind of tightening up a little bit? Well, there's nothing wrong with tightening up a bit. And the problem, I think there's two, two real big problems with what Trump did. The first is, he did it in this haphazard way where they announced the order. Nobody knew what it meant. And people who were like permanent residents in the United States who were never considered, right. you, know, you know what I'm saying? Those people right. had their lives disrupted and people who had legitimate visas that had already been cleared right. were like businessmen. I mean, I'm writing it. I mean, my column comes out tomorrow, but I'll give you an example. The woman who is the only Yazidi lawmaker in Iraq. And she gave a famous speech in 2014. The Yazidis are this minority group that ISIS was committing genocide against in the Sinjar Mountains, where she, she says, in the name of, the, you know, allegiance to Allah, my people are being slaughtered. She is not an Islamic, radical Islamic terrorist. She's not an right. ISIS person. She's yet a victim of ISIS. She was supposed to receive the Tom Lantos Human Rights Award in Washington next week. And she can't come here because of this extreme measure from Trump that said no one can come in from those countries for the next right. 90 days. Right. So if he would have just said, we're going to put a pause on processing visas, Moody, I'm with you. It should be tightened up. And, and the problem is the Democrats are being just, just as disingenuous because they're calling it a Muslim ban. It's not a Muslim ban. It's not a Muslim ban. Yep. That's the first thing. It's not a Muslim ban. And second of all, when they say, oh, it's great, I don't understand, these people are totally vetted, that goes against reality. Jim yeah. Comey, the director of the FBI, told Congress not even five months ago in congressional testimony that there were lots of problems, especially in Syria, because they don't have public records that we can check, so it's not a, a fail-safe program, although he thinks it's getting better. 
But he even acknowledges, James Clapper, the director, Obama's director of national intelligence, acknowledges there are a lot of problems in a place like Syria where the state has pretty much collapsed to do the kind of vetting you want to do with individuals, like check their criminal record and other things like that, that you would do in a normal situation. So mm -hmm. in some cases, Trump is probably right, and he's well within his rights to change the approach to vetting and the procedure and all of that. The way right. that he did it, though... Yeah. It was so it, disruptive, and it gave the wrong impression, and it was just like, it was an amateur hour. Right, absolutely. And when you say it, it's not a Muslim ban... Listen, the, the, the argument from the American Civil Liberties Union that it's a Muslim ban is that when all of these pieces are taken together, so you have seven countries that are Muslim majority, where we're going to stop any travel for, for 90 days, and then another part of it which talks about refugee policy, which says we give priority to religious minorities that are being religiously persecuted, but not the religious majorities in those countries. They say if you take that together, for those seven countries, it's a Muslim ban. But the refugee part, as I've been taught to experts in my reporting, is something that applies to overall refugee policy. So there's some countries where Muslims are the minority, and there's other countries where Christians are the minority. And, you know, that if there was, you know, if they're facing religious persecution, they should be eligible for refugee status, which is a long process and everything like that. I don't think the facts are with um, the critics who say it's a Muslim ban. And it's only if, I mean, the, the most important fact is that it doesn't apply to Saudi Arabia, which is, a you know, the center of Islam, uh, or Egypt or other Muslim countries. And, you know, and so, it's, but, but it is suspicious and troubling that the original version of this would apply to people who were already permanent residents in the United States. Are we trying to say that we don't want foreigners? Because, I mean, as I think we can all agree, the only Native, Amer the only Native Americans are the Iroquois and the Cherokee. I mean, we're all immigrants, right? Mm, I mean, Not me. Not me. <laughs> right. Some of us came voluntarily and others came involuntarily. Right. Exactly. But right. I'm saying that, so, I mean, I'm, a, I'm, you know, I was raised in Philadelphia and then I remember... You know, when I was a kid, there were Vietnamese boat people who moved, like, near our neighborhood. And then it was cool, but that's part of uh, the American experience, uh, as I see it. So that was really – the fact that it was like that, that thing really did throw me for a loop. I was like, what? Why? Huh? Like, you know, those people should not be fucked with. That's in my view. And put into that conversation, and yet it was there. And, you know, that, that, that raises a lot. Of, and the other part of it is that Trump did in the campaign call for a Muslim ban. And then Rudy Giuliani was asked about this over the weekend on one of these Fox shows. And he said, well, he came to me and, I, and you know, he said, make it legal. And so I gave him this. And, and that's, by the way, like, it's still not a Muslim ban because he's doing it by country. But Giuliani certainly tried to feed that impression. So in some way, I think Trump and Steve Bannon, who was the second most powerful guy in that White House, they want to have this fight right now with liberals. They wanted to be to tell their base, look, we're getting attacked for doing common sense stuff to keep the country safe, and they don't really care what the New York Times says about them or yes, the IMF yes. Report podcast or anything like that. Yes. But it's bad for the country because it tells the rest of the world, it gives the impression that we have a problem with Muslims, which we don't. Now, now you brought up Rudy Giuliani, who who is he is the Secretary of Cyber. What is he? So he's the head of some cyber commission that's going to look at changing our cyber policy. Which is like internet and, and all that sort of, you know, how we get, like, the, the, the whole cyber, how the, there's hacking and all that, right? Well, that's like, yeah, but just, that's like a super consolation prize. Right. Now, now I don't consider myself tech savvy, but I feel like this meatball stain on the tie, Rudy Giuliani, <laughs> has no idea how to text he doesn't know how to fucking email. I guarantee you this fucking guy doesn't know how to work a computer properly. Yet and still, he's the head of cybersecurity for our country. Now, I, I, like, I guarantee you he can't even set up his internet uh, alone, but he's, he's a security guy for everything that has to do with computers, cyber, uh, hacking, China, Sony hacks, uh, Jennifer Lawrence nude pictures. All this is on... This meatball sauce on the chin, yellow teeth, crooked, old school mob tied politician. 
do you think this is an insane position for this? Or is it just like, you know, is it like when the Knicks kept Herb Williams around for years? Like, oh, we're just going to keep <laughs> him around. It, it's just like, you know, he's cool. We all know crazy old Rudy. We're going to give him this job. Is this job serious? Because I guarantee you, this fucking guy doesn't know how to set up a modem in his house. Yeah, it would be <laughs> like if the Knicks, if the Knicks, the Knicks pass over Mark Jackson, who I am agreeing with the I Am Rappaport podcast, would have been the ideal Knicks coach and instead decided to make him the chairman of the New York Knicks committee on point guards, which is nothing, right? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like, like Rudy Giuliani was maybe going to be the secretary of state, which is a very important job, and he got bounced out of the box on that. And so as a consolation prize, Trump was like, hey, why don't you be the chairman of my Blue Ribbon Commission on Cybersecurity, which is just a way of kicking that can down the road. Because remember, he did that because people were talking about Russian hacking during the election, and it was like his response was like, I'm going to look at all the hacking. And oh, my God, I got to. And Rudy Giuliani is, of course, going to probably make sure that whatever report it says it exactly how Trump wants it. So it's a classic kind of political move. He kills two birds with one stone. He's got to disappoint Rudy Giuliani, he wanted to be the secretary of state. So he gives him this job and then he gets to sort of kick the can down the road on the Russian hacking stuff. And is sloppy but, oh, Steve what? Bannon the worst dressed man in political history? <laughs> well, you you got to come to Washington, Raph. I would love for Rudy and Raph to do like a DC event. That would be amazing. Oh, we got to do it. We 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 yes. got. Listen, I'm no fashion icon. Okay, I, I I'm never on the cover of any of these fashion things. Best dressed. I'm not even in the worst dress. I'm not even considered in this. But this guy, Steve Bannon. He was in the White House with a pair of black stonewashed jeans on and like some kind of like karate shoes. Come on, man. Have some fucking respect says, for where you are. <laughs> and he says the media is the opposition party. And I think Trump feels like, what the hell is this media knows? They, no one predict I would win anything. So you, you, like, that's his position towards the media. That's, that's, that is his position to the media. But, like, if he, he should, it's troubling that he doesn't have somebody in the room to tell him that you don't have to have, you're not in the campaign anymore. Here's the right. thing that Trump's got to understand. He's going to be judged by his base and the American voters by what he can deliver on the things that he has promised. And it's the same for everyone else. So right. people are going to ask themselves in four years, am I better off than I was in 2016? All right, Eli. Listen, I appreciate this phone call sincerely because I think that there's so much confusion and, and we're trying to give our two cents to to, to, to educate ourselves uh, and to educate the listeners and, and to have an opinion that, that, that brings some makes some sense of this and help help people sleep uh, good at night. Um, this is Eli Lake, the official, yes. unofficial political correspondent of the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. We shut down all the hipster trolls. We shut that shit down easily. We you, shut it down. You see they ran yeah. back into their little fuck holes and, and their little coffee <laughs> shops. We, we, we sent them in there real quick. Um, I appreciate the information, Eli, and, and, and I'd love to have you back on soon. I'm sure it's going to be oh, a busy... Oh, I love it. Thank you. It's going to be a busy four years for you. Yo, Moody, thank you too, man. The co yes. co-host for Damas. Yes, absolutely. Eli Lake, y'all. Hey, can I just say one thing to the rapid pack? Go ahead. Or actually, I hope they have a way to do it on demand because I didn't catch it every night. But you need to see. 